Hello, and welcome to EGA's 2024 Mid-Year Update. My name is Karen Hamilton, and I have the privilege of serving as your National President. I'd like to introduce who we have with us today. First up are the officers and directors of the Executive Committee. These six individuals work tirelessly to manage the operations of EGA in conjunction with our staff. They include Trudy Pohopakchiko, Vice President, Pam Collar, Treasurer, Christine Thurston, Secretary, Vicki Swerdlow, Director of Bylaws, Wendy Lynn, Director of Membership and Marketing, and Val Reese, Director of Education. We also have our 12 region directors online today. They serve members across the country, and we thank them for their hard work. Our region directors include Gail Smith from the Carolinas region, Sue Kohler, Great Lakes region, Robin Berry, Greater Pacific region, Deb Powell, Heartland region, Maria Hall, Metropolitan Region. Donna Pence, Mid-Atlantic Region. Trisha Berry, New England Region. Mary Bangs, the Pacific Southwestern Region. Joanna Lord, the Rocky Mountain Region. Judy McGraw, South Central Region. Teresa Brewer, Sun Region, and Marjorie Sink from the Tennessee Valley Region. We also have our wonderful headquarters staff with us. We have Rand Duran, our interim administrator. We have Tonya Parks, our membership and financial coordinator. And we have Lily Higgs, our administrative assistant. We're very happy to have everyone with us today. We will now begin our formal presentation. As you can see from the agenda, we will be hearing from each of the members of the executive committee. Following their reports, we will finish the presentation by answering the questions that were submitted by members prior to this update session. The first report is your president report. We held our mid-year board meetings for 2024 in March, March 7th through 9th. We did hold these meetings virtually this year. Significant decisions included no increase in national dues for 2025, approval of Lori Welker as the National Seminar Committee Director, and approval of Gay Smith as the National Seminar Committee Deputy Director, each for a three-year three -year term commencing in March. We also determined the scholarship and award amounts for 2025. I'm happy to report that our historian, past president, Janet Noble, has begun to work on the 2023 annual report. The report will be available later this spring on the EGA website. I do encourage you to take a look at it when it is announced because it will hold all sorts of fascinating information on what we accomplished during this past year. For 2024, we have several scholarships coming up. The deadline for the Marjorie Jones Scholarship is right around the corner at April 1st. We are very happy to announce that we've awarded one scholarship this year so far, and that's to Heather Long. Heather has received the Mary Dick Diggs Scholarship. The Penny Evans Scholarship deadline is May 1st, and the Research Fellowship Grant deadline is June 1st. 
we have did not have anyone apply for the 2024 Legacy Scholarship. I do encourage you all to consider applying for one of these scholarships. I just look at it as free money to pursue our passion. Information and application forms may be found on the EGA website. And finally, I did again want to mention that with Cynthia Welch's retirement at the end of 2024, Rand Duran has stepped in as our interim administrator to manage EGA's daily operations while we conduct a search. We have a huge thank you going out to Rand for taking on this important role while still handling all his regular duties as the electronic media coordinator. We know it's a huge job, Rand, and we couldn't we couldn't manage without you. So thank you. Now I would like to turn things over to Trudy Poopachiko, our vice president, for her report. Thank you, Karen. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. Um, we have um, 12 regions, which Karen already introduced the RDs to you, um, with 240 chapters across um, EGA. Um, the purpose of the regions is to support the chapters uh, by communication, leadership, and education. Those are our primary goals um, that we're, that they've done. I'd also like to give a summary report on the National Seminar Committee. Um, they do support and guide the national seminar teams for each event, and then there are multiple seminars in progress at the same time in various stages. Um, again, Lori Welker is now the NSC director for the next three years, and Gay Smith is the deputy director. Sean Miller is the current NSC registrar. Her term ends at the end of next year. And Sharon Davis is the National Seminar Treasurer. Her term ends did this month. And Joyce Furry Sievers has, has started her three-year term this month. We've got four seminars currently in process. We have 2024, Preserving Needle Art in Atlanta this summer in August. I hope everyone is going to come. 2025 is going to be held in Dallas by the South Central Region and the name of it is called the Needlework Fair. Um, we're looking forward to seeing the classes to be offered. 2026 is going to be hosted by the Sun Region in Florida, the Florida area. And 2027 is going to be hosted by Pacific Southwest Region um, on the other, the other side of the country. Um, some details on preserving needle art. Um, as of March 1st, we had 383 registrants so far. We successfully used the new first come first served registration process, which worked very well. Um, we have the stitch in time retreat style classes, which are open to members and non-members alike. It's new, new for us this year. And they had three virtual classes um, to be held post-seminar and when I wrote my report, two of those were already full. And then we have um, the pop-up shops. And as of March 1st, we had 12 shops and eight teachers participating over a five-day period. And then the tours were announced this last week. So things are moving along. The 2025 um, seminar in Dallas has completed their faculty selection. And those class samples will be on display in Atlanta. And registration will open on September 10th. Another duty that I have is um, part of the Securing Our Future efforts that we've uh, undertaken under Karen. Um, I'm in charge of the Structure Committee. I transitioned that from Marge um, when sh she finished her term last year. We completed the chapter survey and distributed the results to the region directors. Um, we completed the region survey and those results are getting ready to be sent out. Uh, we've updated some areas in the website. Rand helped to get those posted very quickly on the website. There's a tools for chapters area and a tools for region area. Both of those have um, links to helpful documents. 
We also updated policies on chapter creation, chapter dissolution, and conversion to satellites. Those are also posted out in the uh, tools for chapter section. And then we're working with um, the team for focus groups on members at large and virtual communities. And I'm going to turn it over now to Christine Thurston, our secretary. Thanks so much, Trudy. Hello, everybody. So as the EGA secretary, my main responsibility is to organize the materials for the EGA board annual meetings and the uh, mid-year meetings. And I also record the minutes for those meetings. If you would like to uh, read those minutes, you can find them on the EGA website. Log in using your membership information. Select members only from the main menu items and then scroll down to member documents where you'll find document downloads and you can search for the minutes that you want to read under EGA business. I attend the executive committee finance personnel planning committee meetings and I also take uh, the minutes for those meetings. In addition, I process the between sessions motions that need addressing by the board. And from August of 2023 until February of 2024, there were 11 between sessions motions that the board voted on. As a member of the Securing Our Future Project Management Office, I do help to organize the Securing Our Future meetings, and I participate in the discussions with the other Securing Our Future team members. If you want to reach me, my email is secretary at egausa.org. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce our treasurer, Pam Collar. Thank you, Christine. Uh, starting in 2024, all dues for primary chapter membership, including national and region dues, will be paid directly to EGA. We have had new members joining since the first of the year and have gotten many positive comments from bo both the joining members and the chapters. Plural members must renew directly with their plural chapter after renewing with their primary chapter online. If you are not sure of this process, contact your plural chapter. They will guide you through their system. Life members must renew directly with their primary chapter. Again, contact your chapter and they will tell you how to proceed. I know we are all anxious to try out the new system, but remember, renewals do not start till April 1st. Once we are open for business for renewals, try it and I think you will like it. If you would like to read more about electronic payments, go to our website, egausa.org. Go into the members section and you will find Dues News. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to our Director of Bylaws, Vicki Swordlaw. Thank you, Pam. You've made the dues stuff sound so exciting. I'm not sure I can follow that up well. But I'd like to speak to you today about what the charge is for bylaws, talk about what's happened in the last several months, and talk about what I see going forward for the next several months. So the director of bylaws, needless to say, works on bylaws. Um, the primary focus, of course, is on the national bylaws. These are documents that help us run the organization in a way that meets our mission and also keeps us legally and ethically in line. In addition to those bylaws, we have policies and procedures, which get down into some details that are not addressed directly in the national bylaws. Once we leave the national level, we're talking about the regions and the chapters. And it's our role also to help the chapters and regions with their bylaws updates. All chapters and regions are on a 10-year, a decennial cycle, but then there are often times in between where a chapter or region decides that an update is necessary and we help with that. Finally, we do some other stuff. Uh, we ensure that parliamentary procedure is followed in national meetings. 
we update who's who. And of course, we answer questions from anybody who wants to know anything about what I've just mentioned. So if I look back for the last six months, um, I have to start by thanking Kathy Weigel, for the former director of bylaws, and Ann Bornstein, the former chair of the chapter region's bylaws review committee, um, for their help as I picked up as director of bylaws and Sue Andrews picked up as the uh, chair of the committee. There are spaces on that committee now. Um, if you're the sort of person who loves detail, detail, likes to proofread, whatever, please reach out to Sue or to me. You can find us at bylaws at egausa.org. In the six month period, we finished updating or amending the bylaws of one region in 14 chapters. Um, we also recorded a how do you do it session. Bylaws updates should not be an onerous process. And I'm not just saying that as a geeky bylaws person. We want this to be easy, accessible for anybody who's in charge. So we started with this um, how to recording that walks you through the documents that are available to you and talks about best practices. The other thing that we've been doing in the last several months is taking an overall look at our policies and procedures. That's about 450 documents, so it's gonna take us a while. And we've been working with RAND to try to make sure that in particular that document download section that Christine mentioned earlier is better organized, more um, accessible again for any member who wants to look up the, the whys and wherefores. And of course, we responded to questions from the field. Looking ahead between now and the annual meeting, there are several recommendations that have come out of the securing our future um, efforts, and we will need to implement those at a number of different levels. There are changes needed in the policies and procedures, and more importantly, some updates needed to the national bylaws, specifically to reflect the change in the dues payment system. We are underway now with the decennial review and revision of the chapters of Pacific Southwestern region. And we're just going to keep on working on those 450 documents uh, to make them more useful to all of you. And of course, we're hoping there are more questions from the field. Just had a fun time speaking um, with the chapter presidents from the Carolinas region last week. They had all sorts of interesting things to say about bylaws, and I'm looking forward to speaking to any other member who has a question. Thank you, and now I'll pass it on to Val Reese, Director of Education. Thank you, Vicki. That was fun. Um, I am the Director of Education, and I wanted to um, mention that I have many, many dedicated volunteer members who work really hard to bring you some amazing EGA educational experiences. In addition, some of these programs are designed to challenge your stitching skills. So let's take a look at some of these experiences. First of all, we have the certification programs. We have appraiser, judge, and teacher. Each of these includes both training and evaluation. At the end of the uh, training and evaluation period, you become a certified appraiser or certified judge or certified teacher, whichever program you joined. Um, next, we have the Master Craftsman Program. Catherine Jordan is the coordinator for that. And she wanted us to congratulate some members who are new Master Craftsmen. Elna Haley in Silk and Metal and Karen Plattner in Smocking. Uh, a note on the Smocking Master Craftsman Program that program has ended. Um, it was not as not as well populated as, as we wanted it to be. So that program is now closed. We The other challenging program that we have is the Technical Excellence Program. We offer right now Technical Excellence in Counted Thread. We have two other stitching techniques under development. Extended study programs. Each Extended study program includes an in-person course and local organized tour. If you are interested in being the chair for this program, please let me know, and I can be reached through education at egausa.org. Petite projects are chaired by Carol Renard, who is the publications chair, and this is our brand new one. Um, it's a mammoth embroidery by Helene Osipov. Helene learned this from her mother, and this is one of our ethnic embroidery 
um, offerings. Also in publications, you're, you will find some other things that are less well known than our petite projects. We have something called a little book of embroidery basics. Um, and we have six technique basics. They're listed here. And if you have a technique basic you would like to add to the list, please contact Carol Renard, who is the chair of our publications area. Group correspondence course gives me the first opportunity to put colored photos out for you. So we have our newest group correspondence courses, uh, Love and Laughter by Denise Harrington Pratt. Now, Denise has done something interesting with hers. She offers the full-sized sampler, and she has a small sampler, and she has a table runner, which you can just barely see the edges of in this photo. But this is set up so you will earn the completion certificate with, when you send any one of these to the teacher for evaluation. Um, we also have Pulled Stitches Clover by Marion Schooler. I said these were in color. Hers is in white on white, of course. In group correspondence courses, we periodically retire courses. Our first retirement um, is in June this year. It's How Does Your Garden Grow? It's a beginner course by Carol Courier. And a reminder to those of you who enjoy um, writing courses for us, we are looking for introductory, or if you want to call them beginner or basic courses. Um, these courses could be good for an accomplished cross-stitcher who might want to expand into a new stitching technique or actually anyone else who wants to expand their needlework vocabulary. In December 2024, we will retire an intermediate course by Gail Stafford called Bargello and Design. We also have individual correspondence courses. Helene Osipov, yes, she is the same person who designed our newest petite project. Uh, she is the chair of the individual correspondence courses. These are a one-on-one. -on -one. That's the stitcher is involved with a teacher, not as part of a group. And the teacher has you do research, you get to design a project and um, learn a lot more in-depth information about each of these techniques. The newest one is the sampler family tree. Uh, we wanted to highlight a couple of others out there. We have India Hayford does design for needlework and Kay Stannis has introduction to metal thread embroidery. And this is an introduction. And if you look at that piece, you say that doesn't look like an introductory piece, but you get there when you work with Kay um, on an individual basis. Online studio with Solveig Wallstrom as the chair brings us a new project every month or almost every month. Sometimes we have trouble getting somebody scheduled on a particular month. Coming up, we have Mandala Hoop Embroidery by J. Marsha Mitchler. The cool thing about this one is when you finish it, you just put the hoop around it and you are framed and ready to hang. Covering the back's usually a good idea too. Um, Kim Beamish has the lacy pin cushion. Also, this finishes up as a pin cushion, no surprise there and um, saves me from having to try find space for it on my wall. Kathleen Weston is the chair for the virtual education courses. Um, we've had our first one, we filled it in nine days um, and it was great, I had a great time with that one. Uh, upcoming, the first one that will be coming up next is Pick of the Patch by Don Donnelly. It will be available for signups later this year. Be sure that you pay attention to the website and look at the next issue of Needle Arts. It should be featured there. Rennie's Rose Garden will be uh, listed on the website and in the issue of Needle Arts that comes after the next one. And our Probably the one of our things that reaches the most people is our virtual lecture series. Mary Van Tyne has been the chair of that for the past three years. We have expanded our attendance to oh, around 250 people. We can handle 500, so we can take 250 more. So give us, give us a challenge. Some of our lectures are also available for viewing later. The videos are usually available within two weeks. Um, could be earlier and 
those have been just really, really wonderfully successful. Upcoming in the virtual lecture series include all of these. I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm going to call attention to the lecture title to be determined, The Art of Esther Krenitz. It turns out that Esther's needlework is in the Daughters of the American Revolution Museum in Washington, D.C. One of her pieces will be shown as part of a current exhibit they have there called Sewn in America. And by sewn, they mean you're using a needle. If you happen to be in Washington, D.C., while this exhibit is open, you will be able to see one of the pieces that will be as part of the lecture in July. So now I'm going to turn you all over to Membership and Marketing, hosted by Wendy Lynn. Thanks, Val. In today's uh, presentation, I'm going to talk about the Securing Our Future initiatives for the Membership and Marketing team, um, our strategy for social media and virtual presence, and our membership results to date. So securing our future initiatives, we have a team of people who are working very diligently on uh, the Securing Our Future uh, program for membership and marketing. In 2023, you may recall that it was finding all about you. We were doing surveys uh, ad nauseum, and we found out a lot about what our members were thinking. Um, we tried to refine our membership levels, and we also focused on closing the financial gap through fundraising. 2024 is all about making navigation on our website easier, reviewing EGA's presence on the internet for chapters and regions, which has been a real important project. Um, also providing tools for creating logos and websites and providing tools for recruiting and retaining members. So our 2024 strategy for social media um, and our social media is really comprised of brand, the stitch along admins uh, from the Facebook page, our outside uh, consultant, Flossie Arend. And the things that we decided to focus on this year is to continue the EGA blog, Facebook page, Instagram, and Pinterest. Uh, one of the new things that we're working on is Pinterest image creation and management. And the great thing about Pinterest is images there kind of last forever. So um, people may not be looking for anything uh, currently with regard to EGA, but if they're searching next year, they can still see some of the things that we put out there this year. Uh, also new in 2024 is inclusion, diversity, equity, and access accessibility interview series. Uh, so I hope that you're all subscribing to our blog and you can see the different interviews that we're conducting. Uh, we're also focusing on embroidery techniques around the world series. One of our recent postings was Hardinger, which was posted back in February. And if you take a look at that posting, it's really a chapter program in a nutshell. So uh, I encourage you to watch these as we begin posting them. The Stitch Along page is always fun. Uh, we also include events on that page. So if your chapters are having events that are like a stitch in public that you want to let out for the world to know about, contact our Stitch Along admins. Um, we also sponsor the Fiber Talk podcast. Fiber Talk is a podcast that's run by Gary Parr. Um, so I hope that you're listening in to him. Um, he posts po new podcasts on Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, we're also venturing into print and virtual ads, increasing our mid-level advertising for EGA. Also new, we're developing YouTube Shorts. So in January, we had a YouTube Short Benefits of EGA Membership. In February, joining chapters directly. And in March, we're doing a national seminar push. 2024, our virtual presence. Uh, we want to be present to our chapters and members uh, on Zoom. And so we started growing your chapter webinars. We intentional or our original intention was to have quarterly webinars. So we started in October of 2023. 
our focus was on recruiting. In January 2024, more recruiting. Then we thought, oh, we should tell people about online special interest groups, which are intended to increase retention of our members. So we started that monthly. Uh, we started growing your chapter webinars monthly starting in February of 2024. March of 2024, we're showing chapters how to begin a, a website. Again, this would be both a recruiting and retention tool. Uh, April of 2024, probably the most talked about topic in all of EGA is renewing membership online. And uh, that is a retention tool. I'm going to talk a little bit about the online uh, new members in a moment. Uh, in May of 2024, we're going to go back to talking about recruiting. And these are always held on the third Saturday of the month at 1 o'clock Eastern. So just dial it back to figure out what time you'd be in Central Mountain and Pacific. In the future, we've been asked to think about having a growing your chapter, using technology for chapters, especially hybrid activities. We haven't picked dates for that. Stay tuned. Now for the, the Growing Your Chapter webinars that we've already held, recordings are available on www.egausa.org. In the search bar in the upper right-hand corner of the homepage, just enter Growing Your Chapter and a list of the videos that you can watch will be shown there. And we're finding out that more people are attending the videos than attending in person attend in person, you can ask your specific questions. So I hope we'll see you on Zoom. Okay, uh, also a virtual presence retention tool that we're trying to uh, extend, our online special interest groups. Another acronym that everybody's throwing around is SIGs. I prefer to call them special interest groups. We've started two in surface embroidery, one in beading, one on crazy quilting, Two chapters have started them in, in gold work. We tried one for lightning round. So if you sign up for a group correspondence course lightning round, you can ask Brand to, to contact all the people in that lightning round to see if they want to participate in a special interest groups to pace yourselves through that lightning round but you have to be willing to do this yourself. You know, if you'd like to host such a, a special interest group, please do so. And also group correspondence courses. Uh, I know Great Lakes Region in particular has had a lot of success in offering four GCCs a year and uh, having online special interest groups to help the people who sign up through those GCCs. So, uh, more opportunities. Okay, I'm going to switch now to some of our membership results. The online new memberships are really a huge boost to chapters. In January 2024 through March 7th, we got 252 new members online. That was 173 chapter members because the first thing that you've been asked since January is if you want to join a chapter and how to find a chapter. So two thirds of our new members have become chapter members. A third, a little less than a third of our, our new members are members at large. So 78 people became members at large. And there's a variety of reasons for that. Sometimes people just aren't close enough to a chapter. So we want to really focus on making sure that if chapters are hybrid, uh, if they have a good online presence, that somehow we start figuring out how to market that. Uh, but other people, members at large meetings just don't fit in their schedule. They'd rather remain anonymous members out there. Um, so there's a variety of reasons why people become members at large. Now the membership results, this is a pretty number dense um, chart. I'm showing total membership from 2015 through 24. And the points that I'm measuring are March because we're in March right now as we're recording this and December. Now, if you think about the way we had membership renewals in the past, our membership should increase every month from June of a year 
until May of the following year. We should start the count all over after the membership drive for the May 31st renewals. This is going to change slightly going forward, but you can see here that if we look at our March membership, which remember the highest membership that we get in a year is in May. Um, if you look at 2015, we had 9,654 members in March. We go back to zero or back to just the renewals effective with June of every year and start climbing back up again. So in December, we go up to 9134. Now I'm going to bring you forward to 2019. We had 8,832 members in March, 8,579 in December. And then in March of 2020, we're back up to 8,850. And in March of 2020, there was a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. So we see in March of 2021, we dropped down to 8,500 members. The interesting thing is in December, we're about where we were in December of 2020. In 2022, we're banking about the same 8,541 members in March, dropped a little in December. However, in 2023, the number of members that we had in March picked up a little bit. It picked up in December. And in March of 2024, I'm happy to say, we have 8,834 members, which takes us back to pre-pandemic days. We're already back in the pre-pandemic. And I'm looking forward to continued increasing membership with some of the strategies that we have moving forward. Now, my wish list, if I was to give you each a wish list, I would, first of all, Encourage everyone to use the current EGA logo everywhere. Um, if you're stitching out in public, make sure you have an EGA banner, an EGA table cover, uh, something that shows the current EGA logo. I want that EGA logo to be as recognized around the world as the Coca-Cola logo or the Amazon logo. You know, let's use the current EGA logo everywhere. Um, you could use it in your chapter and region logo. And if you want to redesign your chapter logo, we actually developed a plug and play chapter logo that has the EGA logo embedded in it. Um, if you have no logo currently, or if you want to update your logo. If you want to update your logo yourself, if you don't like our very simple one, make sure that you submit that logo to headquarters. Uh, Rand and I are currently the reviewers. It's the head of the EGA headquarters at the time and the director of membership and marketing that'll be making sure that you're following the brand standards for the logo. And make sure you've got the EGA logo on your website. Use it on your Facebook page if you have a chapter Facebook page. Um, again, let's make it the nationally recognized embroidery logo. The other thing I'd like to point out is that you should be ever kind. I stitched a little ditty on this back in 2000. In today's environment, I think it's more important than ever to be ever kind. So take time to interact with all members of your chapter. Uh, on a, on a very kind basis. Don't let people feel like you are cliquish or unwelcoming. Uh, you want everyone to be feel equally welcome. Let your social posts be supportive ones, please. Uh, people feel anonymous when they're posting things online and they shouldn't because sooner or later we may find out who you are. If you have a gripe, we want to address it, but please do it privately. Send it to me at marketing at egausa.org. And please break down your stitching clicks. Make Cast the net wide uh, so that more people can become part of your group. Uh, and with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Rand Duran, our interim administrator, and his headquarters report. Thank you, Rand. Hi, everybody. Um, as part of the headquarters team, our main focus this year has been to support the Securing Our Future initiatives. Uh, the main part of that has been working with the electronic dues processing 
working on that whole project, making that change, and not only making that change, but making the processes behind it work so we can quickly notify chapters, let everybody know when their members are joining, um, pay, their chap pay the chapter dues back to the chapter so they can start working with that. And so far, um, we've received very good news from the chapters who have been receiving members. Members just find them through the website and join them, and it's a surprise for them uh, because now we have that place where members can join through the website. Um, so that's been very positive for us. Uh, it's great to see every day new memberships come in, new chapter memberships come in, and we're working really hard at headquarters, Tanya, Lily, and I, and our volunteer, uh, Karen, which is, she's from uh, the Louisville chapter. She's been helping us to, to get everything as soon as possible to the chapter so they can start interacting with these new members. We've also been working uh, with the website updates team. Um, many changes you have seen already. We have been changing things in the navigation of the website to make it easy, make things easier to find. And we've also created some pages to help you specifically find the things that you need to get your job done if you're one of our officers in chapters or in regions. As Trudy mentioned, we have the new tools for chapters uh, and tools for region page. But I also want to mention the marketing page uh, that we released recently. Uh, if you need a logo, if you need uh, brochures, if you need branding standards, if you need to know what colors, the what are the DMC colors for oil brand standards, you're going to find it at egausa.org slash marketing. Uh, and if you think that other things should be there that will help your chapter or will help us market EGA, outside of our four, four, door, four walls, uh, let us know when we can keep improving these pages so everything you're finding on the website can be found easily. Uh, with that, I uh, will pass it to Karen, who will be taking the next step. <laughs> thank you, Rand. And thank you to everyone for your informative presentations. We will now answer the questions that were submitted uh, by members. We had a total of seven questions submitted, with one answer being sent directly to the member as it was less universal in scope. Pam, the first two questions fall within your purview. Thanks, Karen. Uh, the first question comes from Eileen of the Monmouth chapter. Um, I would like to know the reason for the change in the payment of dues. Thank you for your question, Eileen. While MALs could always join EGA online, chapter members could not. In response to feedback from both chapter members and chapter officers, we have updated our system so that almost all members can join or renew online. This new updated system removes the burden of reporting from chapter membership chairs and does away with the prorated dues that it caused so much confusion. The second question is from Andrea of the Madison area chapter. Once a member registers, is it possible to have an auto email generated to chapter membership, chapter treasurer, and regions uh, signifying a new membership? This could help the staff workload and cut the lag time between registration and communication to the two member, to the new member. At this time, this is not possible. Although chapters have been notified within days of our new members who have joined in January, February, and March, this will simply be impossible to do during our high volume months of April and May, when the majority of members will be renewing. Uh, going forward, we will look at ways to improve timing of communications on new, new members. Um, but please know we do get information to you as quickly as possible. Thank you. And now the questions for our VP, Trudy. Thank you, Pam. I also have two questions. The first one is from Jamie Burstein of the Foothills chapter in Rocky Mountain region. Um, she believes that the governance of EGA is too weighty. There are so many volunteer positions and not enough people to fill them. This reality makes it difficult to recruit younger stitches. My advice is to skinny down the governance of EGA from national to the chapters. 
Jamie, thank you so much for submitting your question. This has been something we've actively been working on this year in the Securing Our Future Structure Committee. We've been looking at decreasing overhead and determining the minimum number of officers that are needed at the chapter and region levels. I would love to hear your ideas on ways to help with this process as we expand to other positions in the chapters, regions, and national. So you sent me your phone number. I'm going to be calling you. Thank you so much. The second question I have is from Christine Curtis of the Tucson chapter in Pacific Northwest region. And she had a question related to the um, facilities use fee um, on seminars. So thank you, Christine, so much for your question on facilities use fees. Um, the classrooms and common spaces used during a seminar are financially covered by meeting a minimum number of sold hotel room nights and a minimum of food and beverage spend. If EGA failed to meet these two requirements in the contract, we would have to pay penalties to the hotel, a situation that did occur in 2022. The seminar committees and our event planner review the room block fill rate closely leading up to the seminar, and we're monitoring this on almost a weekly basis leading into Atlanta. The facilities use fee helps cover the room nights for members who elect not to stay at the hotel while they are attending classes at the seminar. And for Atlanta, this equates to approximately a two-night stay at the hotel. If the facilities use fee is only, is only applied if you are taking two or more days of classes, so there's no fee applied if you've signed up for a one-day class. With the increasing complexity and costs of hotel contracts, I don't see us removing this fee for not staying at the hotel. However, we are pleased to be offering at the Atlanta seminar the stitch in time classes. You do not need to be registered at the class nor pay a facilities use fee to participate in those sessions and those from one to five days. You can sign up for one day up to five days. I'm told there will be some fantastic door prices. This is replacing the studio time classes that would have been expected to have a hotel stay associated with signing up for that class or a facilities use fee. So please watch for these classes at future seminars as well. And the next questions, I believe, are vows in education. Thank you very much. I actually have only one question. And this question is from Julie, who's a member of the Camellia chapter. Her question is, please consider asking designers to make their designs so they can fit into a standard size frame. The cost of having a piece professionally framed has skyrocketed. Julie? Thank you for your question or your comment. And I'm going to relate my path, my I'm going to relate what I have experienced. In the past, I have been told by more than one designer that that particular designer does plan her framed projects to fit standard size frames. I don't hear this from everyone, but I've been surprised at the number that I have heard it from. There is also there is at least one commercial cross stitch source that identifies which standard frame size fits their projects. In addition, we have designers who create projects that can be finished as ornaments, stockings, jewelry, stand ups, needle cases, table runners, and other items that are not designed to be framed. When I look for a class, I look for things that do not need framing because I am running out of wall space. I will mention your request, however, to the teachers so that they can take that into consideration. Thank you. And let's go to Wendy for her question. Thank you, Bill. Uh, the question that I've got is from Diane in the Oatlands chapter. And Diane asks, with life membership increase to a whopping $2,500, I question EGA's commitment to inclusiveness. Thank you for your question, Diane. Um, as you know, membership dues were increased at, a, at every level within EGA this year. Um, as a 501c3 organization, EGA is a not-for-profit organization. And like most 501c3 organizations, fundraising should be an important part of what we try to do in order to make sure that we fill any budget deficit that we have. Um, so life memberships are one opportunity for someone who wishes to contribute more in a given year to be able to do so in a way that's recognizable. Life members get exactly the same benefits as all other members 
um, except for uh, young adult and youth who don't get a print copy of Needle Arts. Uh, they also get a 10% discount on EGA merchandise to recognize the significant contribution that they've made to EGA. So with that, I'd like to turn the questions back over to Karen. That's the end of our questions. Thank you so much, Wendy and everyone. And thank you to all the members who submitted the questions. We appreciate hearing from you. This wraps up our 2024 mid-year update. It also is close to wrapping up my time as your president. And so I would like to take this opportunity to thank the dedicated volunteers of the board of directors for their willingness to step up and lead our beloved organization. Without our region directors and elected officers, EGA would not be the dynamic, creative, and relevant needlework organization we are today. And we certainly could not keep our doors open without our wonderful, wonderful EGA headquarters staff. I also want to thank you, the members, for your encouragement, support, and patronage during my term. Together, we can continue to build a secure future for EGA. Thank you for taking the time to view this mid-year update. Please keep your needles and thread in hands and EGA in your hearts. Happy stitching. Goodbye.